greenhouse gas. So there are some videos for this experiment that will go through the various activities and uh, you have the background provided to you written out. I'm just going to go over the background information and then I'm going to go over each activity and the relevant chemistry for that, that activity. All right, so carbon dioxide, as you can see, is CO2 and it has two double bonds, a couple of unshared pairs. So it is, it's a linear molecule and it's flat, but these bonds are very polar. Each of the bonds are polar, but the molecule overall is nonpolar. Uh, now, uh, some of the important properties of carbon dioxide, you can look them up. Some things that you want to know is carbon dioxide uh, does not support combustion. There we go. And you can hear the alarm system. <laughs> Sorry about that. So one thing about carbon, it's even used in fire extinguishers. So carbon dioxide, uh, a test for carbon dioxide. So we've done some splint tests this semester, and we've already done one with carbon dioxide. If you have a burning splint and you put it in carbon dioxide, it'll actually go out. And so you'll see in one of the activities that will demonstrate that. Uh, also, carbon dioxide is a non-metal oxide. So you saw in experiment four. that non-metal oxides can react with water. So carbon is a non-metal, that's its oxide. So non-metal oxides can react with water. And remember, non-metal oxides uh, plus water will make an acid. In this case, uh, the non-metal oxide is carbon dioxide, water, of course, and it will make carbonic acid. This is found in sodas, if you remember from experiment one. Okay. And it's an acid. And we talked a little bit about acid properties, and we'll do I'll, I'll show you some other equations with this uh, in one of the activities. I'll go through each one of them. Now, in addition, uh, the other thing, so that, that's a big thing, and of course, carbon dioxide is formed from uh, burning fossil fuels. So if you remember, CXHY, a, a hydrocarbon, which fossil fuels are made from. If you burn oxygen, you burn them, combine them with oxygen, you will get carbon dioxide and water vapor. All right, now carbon dioxide, that means there's a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels. And this is where the greenhouse gas comes into effect. So the greenhouse effect, we've talked about this in the lecture, the greenhouse effect is simply the fact that things can get uh, pretty warm based on energy from the sun and the interaction with the atmosphere. And a good example of a greenhouse effect is if you've let, ever left your car in the sun, right? It might be hot outside, but if the car, inside of the car, it'll be much hotter. And that's because the windows uh, will filter out a lot of the uh, energy, but the infrared goes in. And infrared is what causes it. So just to remind you of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is light energy from the sun. Right, we have the low, low energy, we have stuff like radio, we have microwaves. I'm not going to go into this in detail because you talked about this in the lecture. Um, then you'll have infrared, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, then higher energy, ultraviolet, x-rays. This is high energy. And Energy interacts with things in different ways. Radio frequency really doesn't do much. Microwaves will cause uh, water molecules to spin. Ultraviolet is ionizing radiation, so that can pull electrons off of things or break chemical bonds. X-rays can go through. This part is, of course, visible. Visible actually goes up to violet, sorry. But infrared, what this does, infrared can cause covalent bonds What's going on with those dogs today? They wait until I do these videos to stretch. They go, oh, he's doing a video. Now's a good time to make a lot of noise and or bend. And so what happens is the energy goes in. Think of it like a rubber band. If you stretch a rubber band, you, you put some energy in to stretch it. When the rubber band unstretches, right, when it unstretches, it releases that energy. But it doesn't release all of it in the same form. Some of it comes off as heat, and that's what the greenhouse effect is. And carbon dioxide just happens to be a molecule that absorbs energy in the infrared. 
and we'll do a simulation of global warming in this lab. All right. Um, but if you want to do an analogy, I've mentioned this in the lecture, you can just jump up and down for a couple of minutes and the energy that from your muscles that pushes your legs off the ground, when you release that energy comes back, but some of that energy goes off as heat. So remember, energy can change form. And you know if you jump up and down for a couple of minutes, you'll get quite warm. All right, so that's the background for the experiment. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go through each of the activities and um, but yeah, we'll just go through each of the activities and what you're going to do in the chemistry behind it. Again, of course, you're not doing it, but the video, I have videos of most of them. This thing doesn't want to work right now. Come on. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Let's go back to here. All right. So activity one, I'm going to abbreviate them ACT. Well, activity one. Activity one, you're just going to look up a bunch of stuff. So look some stuff up. And I'm just going to give you data sheets to fill out that you can upload in this experiment. Just look up that information, and it should be pretty easy to find. All right, activity two, we're going to look at dry ice. We're going to look at a property of dry ice. So activity two, and there's a video of this one. We're going to work with dry ice a lot in this lab. So dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide. So it's called dry ice because when it melts, there's no water, right? It's not, it's not water ice. It's not water ice. It's carbon dioxide ice. Now, of course, dry ice is so cold it will freeze water out of the air. But what this does is it sublimes. And what sublimes means is it goes from a solid straight to a gas without becoming a liquid in between. And so uh, you, you'll see some stuff because it freezes water out of the air. So what we do in this part is we just take a piece of dry ice and you can look at it. I put it in a beaker and then I kind of hold my hand over it so the gas will sit in there. And then I just pour the gas over a candle and you'll see what happens because of the carbon dioxide's behavior with a flame. All right. So I'll let you just kind of deal, look at that. But I just talked about one of the, some of the properties of carbon dioxide. All right. Activity three. Activity three, going to make carbon dioxide, all right? Um, and actually, uh, that's a, yeah, activity three, I'm sorry. Activity three is we're going to do um, the non-metal oxide thing. My bad. I got them mixed up. So what we're going to do in this part of the reaction, I'm going to take a beaker that's got sodium hydroxide. And if you remember from experiment four, sodium hydroxide is a base. We talked, we're not doing a lot with acid base chemistry, but bases turn the phenolphthalein indicator. Again, we did this in experiment four. Is pink in the presence of base and in the presence of neutral. Um, If it's colorless, it means it's neutral or acid. And so I'm going to start with some sodium hydroxide in a beaker. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take carbon dioxide, just dry ice, and put it in the water. And the water also has carbon dioxide, also has sodium hydroxide in it. And what, what that will do is it will form the carbonic acid. And what you should see is the carbonic acid that is formed will react with the sodium hydroxide. And that's why it's pink, remember? I'm just looking above. will react with the sodium hydroxide, and that'll form sodium carbonate. You know, I need to worry about names. And it will form water. I'm going to let you guys balance the equation. But this, remember, the solution is only pink because of this. So this stuff is neutral. That should be colorless over here. And so that is proof that we're forming an acid because the sodium hydroxide reacts with acid. So what you should see, I think you can figure out what you should see from there. All right, that takes care of that. And there's a video for activity three. Just a couple more. Okay, activity four is where we're gonna make. This is gonna be, we're gonna make CO2. And what we're going to do, and we're going to prove we made CO2 by doing a splint test. So I'm going to take calcium carbonate, 
which is chalk, basically, and I'm going to add hydrochloric acid. That will form calcium chloride. Again, you're not worried about the names of these. We'll do that much later. And it forms water and carbon dioxide. And I'll let you guys do the equation balancing as part of the right up for the experiment. And so I'll take this. When we add this, you'll see it'll foam up. That's the gas being formed. And then I put my hand over the top of the test tube just to make sure the gas doesn't escape. And you'll see as I pour, uh, so I stick a burning splint in there, you'll see what happens. All right, then activity five. There's two videos for activity five. There's the beginning and the end. Activity five is mimicking, whoops, mimicking global warming. Now the procedure in the lab manual is incorrect because I changed it because we've been playing with this for a while to make it work. So basically what I've done is I've taken two containers and I put a thermometer in each one. All right, there's a little thermometer in each one. And each of these has a light source. And the light source, that's a light bulb. See? Uh, they're the same kind of light bulb. That's a bad light bulb. So this is giving off energy, and it also gives off infrared. This one just has water. And this one has water, and it's the same amount of water, water plus dry ice. And of course, what happens is the dry ice will evaporate in the water and will get CO2 in the air. There's some CO2 in the air here because this is just air, oops, air. But this has much more CO2. And then what, I've, what we do is we measure the, the temperature initially. And then we measure the, the temperature over about an hour and see the change in temperature. Now, of course, the dry ice is going to make this start out much colder than this is. So you're not don't be focused on what the initial and find how much how hot each one gets. Focus on the temperature change, and you'll see which one changes temperature more. And I did this; it's also ten degrees Celsius, so it's quite significant, right? And there's much better pictures than what I've drawn. And then the last one is activity six. And you can even do this at home. Uh, I show you a model of CO2. Made, I literally made it from two rubber stoppers and some rubber bands. And just, just look at which ways these bonds can stretch or bend. So remember it can stretch this way, this bond can stretch this way, it can bend in and out of the plane of the molecule. Just that That's basically what you're supposed to see is that bonds can be stretched and bent and how many different ways you can maybe play with that. All right. So again, back to activity five, the procedure that's written there is not the procedure I did. I, instead of make using this, this, which is for activity four, I just simply put a pop piece of dry ice in there. All right, so that's it for experiment five in terms of, uh, I believe, the background. You should have enough information to do everything, and the videos will help you as well. And, of course, there's always a quiz. Okay, enjoy the videos. I had fun making them, and uh, see you at experiment six.